Device motion is made possible through a series of always-on sensors that tell us how a computer is moving through space. This capability allows us to rethink conventional interface design and create interfaces that take advantage of where a computer is and how it's moving. Behind all of it is a series of sensors like the accelerometer. The accelerometer measures linear acceleration, but in a more practical sense, it can tell us things like, is the screen currently in landscape or moving over to portrait mode? If we detect this kind of change, we can actually change the interface as well. We can move controls around and adjust things to fit better in the new aspect ratio of the screen. We can also detect changes like when a two-in-one computer moves from clamshell over to convertible mode. Now, what can you do with something in convertible mode versus clamshell mode? Well, let's take a look at a conventional interface like a slideshow gallery. We could take a conventional slideshow interface on a convertible and just sit back and allow it to play in slideshow mode. Or we can do something more interesting. We can use the integrated video camera to detect the motion of our hand and allow us to pan the images right or left to see what's actually inside that slideshow. This interaction is made possible through a combination of the integrated video camera and the orientation change we detected with the accelerometer. Now, the accelerometer is only one of the motion sensors in today's computing devices. We've also got the magnetometer, which acts as a digital compass, and the gyroscope. When you add those three sensors together, you get what we call nine axis of true motion. That is, we can detect shakes, twists, and pivots of the device in three-dimensional space very accurately. With that kind of information, we can create interactions that allow you to pan a large surface, like a map, just by rolling the screen in your hands left and right and allowing the content to fluidly move as you shift a device around. We can go even further, detecting the motion of an automobile. And when the car starts to accelerate quickly, the device can detect that and bring up map mode, showing your progress through the screen as you encounter rainstorms or other kind of turbulent weather. In fact, we can go the extra mile. And when those dark storm clouds roll in, the ambient light detector on the device can kick in and, guess what, switch the interface to make it more visible. As you can see, designing for device motion is exciting stuff. It goes well beyond detecting landscape and portrait mode and adjusting the interface accordingly. Through a combination of real three-dimensional movement and other sensors like ambient light or the integrated video camera, we can rethink application interfaces to not only make them more immersive, but also more useful as well.